Kiss him! Kiss! Smooch! Mmm! That, that's not fair! I wanted to kiss you first! Hello everyone and welcome back to Bewitching Sinners. Now, I know, I don't typically start this with an intro, but in the last episode, Lyle did mention that there's a secret admirer who asked him to go out to the festival, and... I don't trust that. I don't trust that. In this world, anything can go wrong. And considering that you are the son of, like, one of the most powerful witches out there, I think it would be a good idea for me to come with you. So, yeah. Why not come with me instead? Huh? Well, I don't have a date. That's very kind of you, but I don't want to hurt Mr. Asham. You two seem to be having a complicated moment right now. I don't want to get into that. Asham and I, but we can dance here if you want. I'm not a good lead, so I can help with that. Oh, this is so adorable! Frick! Oh my god, it's so warm. Where is your outfit? Oh. You held Lyle close. His muscles felt firm under your hands. A pristine work of art. A faint blush tinted his cheeks as you could feel his breath against yours. Nervous? Yeah. Because of me or the dance? Both. But mostly you, I think. You're very pretty, Lion. Especially your eyes. Your eyes aren't bad either, Lyle. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Mm, uh... Asham and I aren't together, by the way. Oh, um, good to know. You dance the night away with Lyle. It was awkward at first, his frame being much wider than yours, and his steps were clumsy, nearly stepping on you three times that night. But still, to feel his heartbeat racing with every little move, his soft knuckles and his eyes softening at last, no longer tinted with fear, it was nice. Hey brother! Don't tell me you're still asleep! Lion! Well, fear. It's already noon. The festival is starting soon. Huh? Did I really sleep that long? That's never happened before. Sorry. I helped Lyle with some dance lessons last night. I guess I tired myself out. Uh, uh, you went that first year? He got himself a date and wanted to practice. Apparently, he never danced before. Huh. So someone was brave enough to ask the witch out. You sure it's not a trick? You know half of our peers are either sociopaths or assholes, right? I noticed that, but there must be some good people out there, right? Uh, well, I guess. His pecs are blinding, so I get why some are interested. Fia! What? I I'm just looking! It's hard not to when they are literally at my eye level. Well, fair enough! Fair enough! If I met Lyle in real life, considering how big of a man he is, okay? I'm pretty sure that's all I'm gonna be looking at. I'll just be staring right at his pecs. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, the dance hall is... The dining hall is already closed, so I brought you some food. Eat up, shower, and I'll help you dress. Oh, uh, about that. I kind of lent Lyle my outfit. You what? But I picked that one out for you. I know, but he had this kicked puppy look on him, and I just felt so sorry he had no other clothes, so... Wait, wait, hold up. Since when have you ever felt anything close to pity, brother? Who are you, and what have you done to Lion? From her tone, you could tell she meant it as a joke, but you couldn't help but smack your lips at that. You feel as if your secret was just about to... It was just about ready to burst inside of you. You okay? You look constipated. That's because I am. Anyway, though, so, are you mad? I mean, about me lending my clothes to Lyle? Ah, <sighs> not mad. Just disappointed, I guess. But you were being nice for one, so it's fine. Dad always said we need to share more, right? Right. Still, do you have a backup? You can't go in your normal clothes. Everyone's already dressed up, even Thane. So his outfit is a little off the mark again. But he is a foreigner, so I guess I shouldn't have expected any better. So what's your backup? I could always use last year's outfit. Seriously? Okay, but just you know, I'm not fending you off from cougars and perverts this time. What? Why? Is it that bad? Fia didn't say anything, but she did open up your closet, revealing an outfit that could only be described as sinful. 
I am not wearing that. It's this or going buck naked. Honestly, naked seems more appropriate compared to this atrocity. Holy, did I actually wear this last year? You should have thought about that beforehand. But hey, I think I saw Lyle lurking around the garden before I came here. He was picking flowers for his date. If you want to ask for your clothes back. Was he smiling? Yep. Remind me of that creepy belly tubbies, baby. He was shining brighter than the sun. I almost went blind. Damn it. Ah, I'll be fine. Help me get the harness and collar on. I will, but let's hurry, okay? I wanted to be there before dusk. And with that, Bia helped you get dressed. You did not finish before dusk. Lion, come on, we're already late. I'm running as fast as I can. What's the rush anyway? Why? I, 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 I look amazing. Holy frick, I love that. I want to watch the jellyfish just as they fly out the water. Ah, yes, the jellyfish. I've the, been the, selling the souls. jellyfish. Yeah. Uh, huh? Before you could ask Fia to elaborate, the water in the river started to glow. Whoa. Right on time. Swarms of flying jellyfish start to rise up in the air, leaving tiny ripples in the water as they burst out into the night sky. Once airborne, you could see them crowding around some of the townspeople, mostly the younger children and elderly. Once... Okay, one approached you, swirling around your hand as it joined the others, floating freely in the air. Ah, I want to catch one! A nearby child stretched her arms, chasing after the flying jellyfish. Focusing more on your surroundings, you realize that she was not the only child loitering about. About a dozen kids were surrounding a tall, handsome man with rainbow-colored eyes. His face was stoic as he gazed longingly up at the night sky. Oh, those must be the kids from Lanar. Didn't think we'd see them around here. Must be because of the festival. Oh, that one's purple. I wish I could see what's going on, but... Uh, is it really that pretty? A blind boy asked sheepishly while tugging at his friend's sleeve. You remember that kid. He sat at the far back during the puppet show. Listening rather than watching the whole performance. A blind watcher and a mute performer. What a bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's super bright and they're all whizzing about. They're like, um, um, they look like fireflies. You unconsciously added, not like they were near enough to hear you anyways. Fia was, she tilted her head at you. Fireflies? What's that? Wait, you don't know what a firefly is? No, unless you're messing with me again. Ah, well. Afraid Fia will catch on, you tried to elaborate. The warm hands immediately covered your eyes before you're able to do so. Guess who? Uh, oh, wait, wait, does this matter? Wait, hang on, hang on. If I say Ashim, will it be Ashim? I am so curious. Ashim. <laughs> Sorry, no. Dang it! Okay, wait, hang on. I can do this. I can just roll it back and pick Zane. Oh, no way! What gave it away? Probably the stat... Probably the stench of your rancid cologne. What is that? Call of the sea. It leers the jellyfish in. You smell saltier than the sea. That's the point. Hello. No high Fia or you look great Fia. I'm right here, you know. Ooh. Hey, Fia. I love your hair. That's more like it. Thank you. It took me hours to do. Is that so? How about your face? Spent any time on that too, or is it just especially hideous today? Oh, I'm so gonna enjoy stepping on your toes tonight, Quill. Me too, darling. For my good heels, just for you. My God, is, is it wrong that I'm shipping them together? Is it wrong? I mean, I want Quill for myself. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I want Quill for myself, but God damn, I love this dynamic. God damn. Oh, -ho. is that so? No wonder you look more whorish than usual. You can feel murderous aura coming both from your sister and Quill. <laughs> if this is one of those enemies to lovers fanfiction you used to read, you call this sexual tension? But knowing these two, it was clearly... 
It was clear there was nothing sexual about it. It was closer to a petty sibling rivalry. So, are you gonna be a gentleman about it and ask me to a dance or what? Of course. Come, I'll show you what I've been training for. And with that, the pair walked hand in hand to the center of Gamora, nearly pushing each other off the bridge as they did so. I don't know if those two are about to dance or murder each other. A little bit of both. They did this last year as well. I think they enjoy it, the fighting. Weird kink, I'm not gonna shame it. Anyway, enough about them. Let's talk about you. Me? This is your first jellyfish festival, right? Anything you wanna ask? Uh, well, uh, what did those jellyfish do? Oh, they're migrating. At least that's what we think they're doing. No one actually knows for sure. Legend says those jellyfish are actually human souls reincarnated as jellyfish. <laughs> I have been selling people. <laughs> I've been selling them this whole time. <laughs> they came out of the water every year or so to say goodbye to their families. Only they're jellyfish, so no one knows what they're talking about. Others say it's a witch trying to lure humans with the jellyfish's beautiful glow. Most people prefer the former, though. Uh, what's up with the outfits? Looking around, you saw almost every girl in the crowd was wearing red, while most men were either wearing collared clothing or leather straps. Thane was the exception. His outfit seemed to be a more literal interpretation of the jellyfish festival, littered with stars. So what's with all the leather? I thought my outfit was bad, but it looks like I fit in after all. I don't know about that. I mean, it's still a bit much. Nice abs, by the way. You're in a lot better shape than Lion is, that's for sure. Thane's gaze dropped lower and- Hey! Hey! No lower! No lower! No! No! That's not there! Thane, I do not want you biting on that. I don't need you feeding off of that. No! No, Thane! His stain seemed- I mean, his stare seemed to linger on your chest, especially on your exposed nipples. I will accept that. I will accept you, like, milking me, okay? But no lower. Uh, ogle him back? Two could play at this game. He took a good look at his tight pants before going up to his sides. You could clearly see some of his muscles, as only thin straps were around to block your view and... Like what you see, buddy? As he said that, Thane moved a strand of hair away from your face and landed back where it was. Always that one obstinate strand of hair. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. Oh, I don't want to rip him that much. It's all right. Yours too. It's all right. Easy on the eyes. Your face heated up at that. First Ashim and now him. The boys here are just too blood with their compliments. By the way, you haven't answered my question. Oh, right. Well, basically, before the jellyfish was a thing, this dance festival was a mating ritual. Mating ritual? Yeah, basically, the men would dance with the girls, and if the ladies like what they saw, they pull on the men's collar and take them to their beds. Ah! <laughs> Giving them their flowers, so to speak. However, flying jellyfish start to appear after the Dead Zone War, so people start celebrating that instead. The church found it more civilized to condone than a whole day of screwing, basically. But the attire was already ingrained in the public's mind, so they just kept it. I, however, am not from here and did not see the point of giving myself a color, so tasteful side boobs. <laughs> I love Thane, God. Tasteful. As Thane led you to the center of Gomorrah, you could see these citizens dancing their hearts out. Some forming their own line dance, some in groups, some in pairs. Whoops, clumsy me. Same, I'm such a klutz. Some try to destroy each other's feet. <laughs> All clearly enjoying themselves under the jellyfish's dazzling lights. Now we're talking. Whoa. Before you could protest, Thane pulled you into the crowd. Follow my lead. He whispered close to your ear as he took you by the arm, twirling you around. Looking around, you start to mimic the others as there was a there was clearly a pattern to all this. Paris seemed to attempt dipping the other in an almost violent movement, as if it weren't a rom romantic gesture, but a battle. 
The only reason this thing caused you any alarm was because of the hearty laugh surrounding you. <laughs> Some cackled hysterically as they tumbled to the ground, failing to dip their partners the way they wanted to. Yo! Hey! Uh, hey! 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 It's a show of dominance. Whoa! Thane dipped you without warning, his hand clasping you tightly around yours as he did so. His other hand firmly laid against your waist, holding you up so you wouldn't fall. Surprise! This is considered a traditional dance here in Ignea. Thane lifted you up so you were standing straight again, dancing in a more mellow pace. Back in the old days, the one who got dipped the most in one song had to be the one pleasuring the other, if they decide to go to a more intimate setting. Of course, few follow through with it anymore. Nowadays, it's just for fun. Uh, dip him! Dip him! I am dipping Thane! He is going to be my submissive! No, well, um, I was gonna use a different word, okay? But I don't think YouTube's going to, like, appreciate me using that. Hey! Pushing your entire body weight onto Thane, you immediately dipped him, returning the favor. Ugh! However, you seem to have underestimated how much he weighed. You lost your balance, immediately toppled over him. Chest to chest, you could hear his heart race. A rapid and steady thumping only bested by your own. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. You're a lot heavier than you look. Yeah, well, I've been eating a lot more lately. Thane helped you up as you dusted yourself off. He fixed his hair awkwardly before fully collecting himself again. It's kind of strange, but ever since I drank your blood, I... Mind if I cut? Asha! Wait! 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 I've been waiting for this all day! <laughs> Mind if I cut in? Before Thane could continue, Asham grabbed you by the waist, lifted you up slightly as the two of you glided effortlessly through the crowd in an elegant waltz. Uh, Asham! Hey! Come back! You dived through the crowd as Asham led you to a more secluded area. His smile never left his face as he gingerly kept his waist close to yours. With intricate steps, Asham whisked you off towards the park. No longer were you surrounded by giggling dancers and loud, boisterous music. Instead, those were replaced with the sounds of passionate kisses of not-so-discreet couples making out on benches and leaning on nearby statues. With a gentle kiss on the back of your hand, Asham let go of your waist, ending your brief little dance. Ah, uh, well... I was in the middle of something, so you're talking to me again. Nice moves, Twinkle Toes! <laughs> I'm going with that. Not so bad yourself. I wish to apologize for my taciturn behavior. You mean you basically ignore me 24-7? I hardly notice. I have been trying to ask you out on the jellyfish dance! Like, come on! You kept it sarcastic, hoping Ashim will take no offense. Again, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so distant. However, my feelings were getting the better of me. I was furious. Yeah, well, I would have been angry at me and other me too, so... Not at you. At myself. Huh? I knew lying for almost a decade now, and yet I was fooled all the same. I had suspicions, of course. Some of your mannerisms don't align with theirs. However, I held my tongue and was beguiled all the same, and I... I like to. I love how you consider my preferences when I asked about my hair. I love how sincere and honest your reactions are. I thought I was falling deeper in love with my lion. It turns out, I was catching feelings for another instead. I felt like I've betrayed a lion somehow. Like, I was the one that cheated on them, and... I I despise that I felt more guilt of that rather than anger for all the lies they kept. The fact that I did everything for Lion only to discover that I had been manipulated to do so made my stomach churn. And yet, I was still so enamored that I couldn't even pin my rage on them and instead, I vented it out on you. I'm such a fool. Hey, stop. If I were you, I wouldn't know how to react either. I get it. You were in shock. Shock was an understatement. Still, I could have handled it better. I'm sorry, Lion. If you don't mind, would you consider giving us a fresh start? I promise, I would behave myself accordingly from now on. 
as friends. That is, if you want us to be. Ashram extended his hand towards you, offering an open handshake. You stared at it as you contemplated your choices. Uh, no more love struck, Ashram! Uh, well... <laughs> Which one? I don't know! Uh, man... Uh, name's Lion. Name's Lion. I'm the sucker Quill brought. I like long walks on the beach, dancing, and basically I'm a recovering alcoholic. Ashim, I'm a hopeless romantic and recently got out of a long, toxic relationship. I love honey, red wine, and I particularly will enjoy annihilating Quill in combat class later. I'll hold you to that. Oh, and Lion? A high-pitched scream uh, cut Ashim off, one that you could easily recognize as your sister's. Was that fear? I think so. Two male students you recognize from the choir club walk past you. You couldn't help but overhear the conversation. Man, Tatum must have really snapped, huh? Just because Fia's an understudy? Chicks, man. Never really understood what they're thinking. I know, right? And she's not the only crazy one tonight. Did you see Ajax beating the crap out of that witch? That Lyle kid, right? Yeah. Heard the bastard actually believe someone asked him to the dance. The fool. Lyle! What the heck? With a hesitation, Ashim grabbed the students by the collar. Where's Ajax? Huh? Oh, it's you. It's the witch, your boyfriend, or something. Typical. A half breed mingling with their own kind. And what are you gonna do if I didn't say anything, Ashim? Cuss me as you did to Ajax's dad? Bet your mom used a love potion on your stepdad, too. That, or she must have some magical legs. You know what? I would beat the crap out of that lad myself. Asham knocked him out before the douche could make- to could get another syllable out. Good thing too, you were just about to do the same. The other student seemed to quiver at the sight, his complexion paling ever so slightly. Talk. I, I saw them by the docks, under the bridge. T don't hit me. Asham headbutted him instead. The man was knocked down in an instant. You should check on Fia. Quill should still be with her. I'll take care of Ajax. Frick! Frick! Ah, no, go, go, I trust Ashim. I trust Ashim. Ooh, 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 God damn. I don't oh, got the save. I go to fear. Thanks. You spot your sister sitting on the cobblestone floor with her whole outfit drenched in blood. Fia! You rush to Fia's side. Quill was doing his best to wipe the blood off your sister's face with his blouse. Fia, what happened? Fia, uh, Lion, I, I, I can't believe someone, someone. You could hear Fia holding back tears as she tried to remove the blood. Your heart couldn't help but break a little at the sight. Someone just ran past and splashed a bucket of blood all over her. Did you see who? No, they ran through the crowd. My dress, my hair. Why would anyone do this? We'll find that asshole who did this. Other than that, you're not hurt, are you? No, but my dress. Would you be mad if I said it was an improvement? Quill, not now! I'm not in the mood for your sass, Quill. My bad. Just trying to lighten, trying to lighten things up, love. Look, what's done is done. Let's get you cleaned up, yeah? You wouldn't dare set this up, would you, Quill? You weren't involved in any of this, were you? Fia, if I wanted to mess with you, I'd do it in style. You know humiliation isn't one of my kinks. I hate you like a sister, but I love you like one. I wouldn't dare hurt you like this. Now come on, let's get you cleaned up. Sniff. Bathroom's all yours. Feel better? Cleaner, but I still feel like shit. You were still in your festival outfit. Fia didn't want to shower in her own room for some reason. You were grateful Lyle hadn't returned to the room yet. You didn't think that you could explain all this properly. Even if it was a boy as sweet and understanding as Lyle. With her hair still damp from the shower, Fia plopped onto your bed. She laid down, looking up to the ceiling. Her eyebrows creased as she seemed to be deep in thought about something. Well, let me brush your hair? Not tonight. Just lie here with me. I haven't bathed. But you're clean. That's good enough, right? 
He let her head fall back onto the pillow, staring up to the ceiling right next to her, mimicking her position. Can I sleep with you tonight? I don't want to be alone. You have your roommate, though. That's different, and you know it. Come on, you sneak into my bed whenever you have those weird nightmares. All right, but just so you know, Lyle snores. And you won't? But thanks for the warning, I guess. Not that it matters. I doubt I can get any sleep after this terrible day. I know you're too old for it, but would a lullaby help? <laughs> That's sweet, but not tonight, Grumbles. I just need to... Need to... Mm -mm. A tear ran down her cheek. You wiped it away with your thumb. You wait for her to collect herself. I spent hours on that flower garland, and now it's all drenched in blood. For what? I didn't even do anything. I was just having fun, acting my age for a change. Everyone tries to stab you in the back here. I hate it. I mean, I have my issues, sure. I'm a bitch, but there are some lines I wouldn't cross. Ruining the one day a girl dresses up and feels pretty is one of them. Her eyes started to water as she said so, holding back tears as her nose started to run. Her heart couldn't help but clench at the sight. Oh, fear. You're pretty to me. Yeah, but you're my brother. It doesn't count. Maybe it does. I mean, mom says you're prettier than me all the time, so I don't know. She's just teasing you. She likes how it makes you squirm. Trust me, if anything happens to you, she'll regret saying those words. She already has in my world. I guess. I swear, I'm gonna find the ones behind this. I know you will, but for now, sleep. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow the prank would be all just a bad dream. I wish. You washed up and went to bed. I am going to ruin that Tatten girl, I swear to God. Fia! Fia, wake up! Uh, we overslept. We'll miss breakfast. Five more minutes. Also, it's a Sunday and I only have night classes on weekends. As she said that, she curled back into a cocoon in the blanket. You knew full well there would be five minutes. Your fear had trouble getting up early, too. Hey, come on now. As you tried to shake her awake, you noticed that something, or more like someone, was missing from your room. Mainly the tall buff man you called a roommate. Huh. Come to think of it, did Lyle come back to the room last night? You hope nothing bad happened to him, given what you overheard with Ashim last night. I better check in with this, those two later. Before you could finish your thoughts, Miss Vilkova strode into your room. No knock or anything. She simply waltzed in as if she owned the place, chin up high as usual. Lion Baker? Huh? What the? Miss Vilkova? Oh, and Fia is here too. Good. That will speed this up. The principal requires both of your presence. Come now. Why? I said come. It's urgent. Ashim? Lyle? What are you doing here? Same reason for you two to be called, I suppose. Principal wanted to know where we were last night. Lion, Lyle here got into quite the scuffle last night. What? Are you okay? I'm fine. Mr. Ashim intervened before anything serious happened. What do you guys mean by... Enough dawdling! In you go! Ms. Vilkova ushered you and Fia into the, principal, the principal's office before you could ask for more details. Ah, the Baker siblings. Thank you for coming. It's not like we had a choice, sir. Uh... Fia! <laughs> no, I guess you didn't, little ones. Since you're so forward, I suppose I should do the same in kind. Miss Tatum, Mr. Locke, and Mr. Hampshire were found beaten and drained of blood early this morning. Wait, what? All three had severe cuts on their necks and nearly bled to death. It's a miracle they survived. No small thanks to the townsfolk. Witnesses say they were found lying there in a pool of their own blood at 2 a.m. Might I ask what you two were doing at that hour, as no one seemed to have remembered you anywhere near the festival. She was with me. Why exactly are you asking? You think we had anything to do with this? Afraid so, little one. I'm well aware of the animosity between you and Tatum. In fact, I have other students reporting that she was the one behind your dress incident last night. So what? You think I would retaliate immediately with blood still dripping from my hair and down my eyes? So you would have gotten a revenge, or you were thinking of it, at least. 
Of course it would have gotten my revenge. What do you take me for? A respectable young lady? However, sir, there's something I care about more than revenge, and that's my hair. I didn't touch Tatum or her goons. My brother can vouch for that. Your brother is far from a reliable witness. In fact, who's to say that they didn't avenge you in their place? Uh, well, I didn't do it. You can use true potions on me. Will they be okay? Uh, I'll just straight up ask, will they be okay? I think this is the right choice here. They need to recuperate at the hospital for a week or two, but they will recover. Our students are more resilient than most. Is that all, sir? I mean, it's clear to me that you're just grasping at straws at this moment. Probably since you can't ask Tatum herself. No, unfortunately, Miss Tatum and her friends are all unconscious. Thought so. Look, Tatum and I don't get along, sure, but that's more her problem than mine. Karma's a bitch and she got what's coming, that's all. Fia. What? I mean, she's not wrong, but her statement doesn't exactly make her look good either. Anyway, we're done here, right? So... Line is dismissed. Yes. You, however, young lady, could use a lesson in manners. Miss Vilkova and I are happy to provide. Perhaps a quick lesson in our academy's core values is needed before you attend your morning classes. W what I... Sit, Fia. Please. The more you talk, the more this will draw out. <sighs> Want me to stay? Fia smiled at you fondly, but even she raised an eyebrow at that suggestion. Oh, I'm used to this, Grumbles. Okay, bye, Fia. <laughs> bye. Done with your interrogation? Ashram! Ashram greeted you by the door, his back leaning on the wall across from you. I was waiting for you. What did he want? Where's Fia? Still inside. It's complicated. Explain to me over breakfast? Sure. Just us two? No, I believe apologies are in order. Too red at least, and Quill too. I suppose. But only if he apologizes first. Good luck with that. Huh. I guess you're right. I have better luck waiting for pigs to fly. Still, I do miss them. Help me break the ice? Gladly. Oh, but let's get out of these uniforms first. I'd hate to spend the weekend in these. The table was heavy with anticipation as Quill and Thane both stared impatiently at Asham. Their eyes were so focused that it seemed like they froze, Asham in place, not knowing what to say. It didn't help that they were staring at him with their hands, with their heads in their hands like they were posing for some freaking glamour shot. Asham's ears were beat red, the blush creeping on his face from all the unwanted attention. You know what? I'll start talking. I, I don't want him to go through this awkwardness. So, I'm so sorry. Ashim started bowing profusely, shaking Ashim's hand before pulling him into a hug. I really didn't mean to lie to you or Red. It's just that I really screwed up and I was afraid of how you two would react, so... There, there. Also, if you don't remove yourself from me in five seconds, I will recant my apology. I have a reputation to uphold, you know? Quill pulled himself away from Ashim, rubbing away his tears as he did so. Can I still get a hug? I mean, compared to these two, I did nothing wrong. And yet you blew me off anyway. Sorry. Ashim patted Thane's shoulder with a firm hand. Thane looked... Thane took Ashim into his own arms and pulled him into a tight bear hug. He lifted Ashim off the ground once or twice. Ashim managed to keep the pads going somehow. It seems we have some... Two shitty friends, don't we, Red? You can say that again. Still, we're gonna bust our asses off trying to save Lion and cover Quill's guilty ass, aren't we? Seems so. Ah, <sighs> I love you guys. And for once, you felt out of place. You've been pretending to be their Lion for a while now, then you forgot that you were an outsider. A new addition to their long and quirky friendship. You almost wanted to flee and find Fia, but Quill seemed to notice your discomfort and draped his arms around your shoulder. And you too, Lion. You hopeless fool. It's a miracle you haven't died yet. Still, I'm forever grateful for your compliance. If only you'd let me show my appreciation in a more intimate setting. You took it back. Screw these weirdos. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and try, virgin. As you whispered those words, Quill stepped back gingerly. He was careful not to push your buttons, if anything. By the way, What's the game plan for Operation Buddy? 
Is that what we're calling it? I want to call it Operation Sleeping Beauty, but then Quill said he's the prettiest one in our group. Oh, come now, Quill. We both know that's not true. One can dream. Uh, well... But I'm the prettiest! <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think I'm afforded some sass. I, I can afford some sass. I see that Lion's confidence is consistent throughout all the world lines. All right, darling, you're a magnificent work of art. Now, how to save that scumbag we call a friend? Don't tell me you have no plan. Okay, I won't. I'm simply stalling for time while our friend's wasting away and might or might not have a brain condition after they wake up, but... So you haven't tracked any of the other witches? No, and I had no luck with Dietrich either. The greedy bastard seems more interested in his club now. That prick! But I guess Riley's safe, so there's that. Well, I might have a lead, actually. Do you? There's this witch I'd seen seeing... That's this witch I've been seeing, donned in all black. She said something about a tomb where humans and witches tried to be gods. The interior of the place was all white limestone and seemed like the inside of an underground church, flooded with water. Any ideas? A flooded church, you say? The Church of Water in Vince? That's all black. Huh. Question. Were there any thrones inside? Thrones? No, just a pillar in the center holding up a crown. That eliminates Ray Hole Tower. And you're sure the water was regular old water? Not blood, right? Blood? No, it was clear. Water. Holy water. Or sea water, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, at least it's not Alexei's lair. That would have been a huge dope for me. His lair is surrounded by a pool of blood. For all surrounding his bed. How gaudy. Actually, while we're talking about blood, Thane, what happened to you last night? What do you mean? About your blood problem? Wait, are you talking about what happened to Tatum? You know about that? The whole school knows. No small thanks to our chatterbox librarian. Of course. I didn't do it if that's what you're trying to say. There were a few other vamps at night. Any of them could have done it. Wait, so you think it was a vamp? No comment. Anyway, should we focus on Lion? Actually, I might have an idea of what Lion is talking about. Or at least... Who can point us in the right direction? You said where humans try to be gods, correct? Yeah. Hedwin. What? I've heard that phrase before. It was from Miss Hedwin. She said the school was either blessed or cursed. It might have risen from the ashes of a god or the murder of one. I actually talked about that with Miss Hedwin before. She said it was just what she'd heard and she didn't know if there was anything under our school. Did she tell you that under the compulsion of a truth serum? Well, no, but... Hey, you're not drugging a teacher just for answers. Fine, I won't. Well, you do it. On it. Oi! Come on, guys. I'm, on, I'm with Lion on this. Besides, Hedwin's not exactly the most reliable source of intel around. You have to admit, some of the things she says are a bit... Yes, we all are aware of Miss Hedwin's eccentricities. But some things she says do have a touch of history and science behind them. This could be one of them. I'll research the library for more help. So, all, all we can do is ask around and do research? That's kind of lame. I mean, we nearly got wiped out by a witch last week. That's not enough action for you, Red. Well, yeah, but you and I were knocked out. Ashram and Lion were the ones dueling it out. I thought at least it would be something more, I don't know, exciting? If you're that much of a thrill seeker, I know something that will scratch that itch. For course sake, Quill, we told you, a gangbang isn't... I meant we could take on a quest. I'm not horny 24-7, thank you very much. I'm not a rabbit. Have you guys not seen the ghost quest? The what now? Don't tell me you have ghosts too. Nope, but that's the thing. Some kids in the dorm had been seeing the core statues in our rooms bleed. They say it would only happen at 3am and after you said Angela Vistera three times. What is it with demonic presences and their obsession with the number 3? In my world, 3 a.m. is called the witching hour. Maybe it's a witch? What does Angela vis... what's it called mean? Blood of Thine Angel. Huh. Seems fun. Wanna check it out? Why should we? It's such a waste of time. Are you sure you're not just scared, Arsham? That's... 
one. You terrified of ghosts, Asham? I've faced feral werewolves and fearsome witches. Don't be ridiculous. Then let's check it out. Your room is free, after all. No. If you do that, then the ghost will... <laughs> He's scared! I mean, you do owe me a favor, Asham. A little bet. And you're wasting it on this? I mean, you're not scared, are you? Fine. Do what you want. Fabulous. Then we'll meet at 3 a.m. in Asham's room. Why did I reconcile with you two again? Terrible people flock together, Asham. Afraid you're stuck with us, dude. Thane slapped Asham's forearm, encircling his neck into a firm yet awkward hug. Despite his scoffing, you could see the corners of Asham's mouth tugging into a faint smile. Will patted his hair, and the smile grew even wider. You wonder if you could really see a ghost tonight. Well, we've got a whole lot of time today, so yeah, uh, I suppose... We're not going to go to the dorm, let's go to the shops. Oh wait, hold up. I have no reason to go to the shops. Classrooms? Oh, wait. Uh, so I've got no reason to be here either. Um, fishing port, I'll only be able to fish. The dorms probably ends the day. Let's go to town today. All right, let's see how the florist is doing. Yo. <sighs> Miss Poppy, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, dear. I'm just, well, sulking. I'm just sulking, really. My brother was drugged with a love potion, and now he lost all his wits and eloped with that crazy woman. He sold his shop, he cut off all contacts with me, and the rest of my fam- My- Oh no, the consequences of my actions! No! <laughs> what have I done? I- I'm going to find that girl and whoever her accomplice is, tear them limb from limb, and shit on their remains. They'll pay- The consequences of my actions! Um, well, hope you do well with that, Miss Poppy. I have things to do, some, uh, good luck with your murder plans. Oh, thank you, dear. I promise you that I'll get my revenge. You played it cool before sprinting out of the shop ble and blended in with the crowd at the town square. I didn't even get my potion recipes. Uh, bookstore. We're closed. Get out. It's of Nina. You were greeted by a grouchy mountain of a man with a long white beard and wild bushy hair. He reminded you of a very buff version of Santa Claus with toned abs instead of a pot belly. Uh, hello Jack Santa. Where's Nina, the girl that usually works here? She eloped. She eloped. The damn girl. Can you believe it? Eloped! With a werewolf, no less. Well, someone's a racist. I ain't a racist, you idiot! My daughter's drugged a man and eloped with him. Of course I'm mad! Wait, you know about that? I found Nina rummaging through my tomes about love potions. Of course I know! I just didn't think she would find anyone willing to brew that potion, because I know she can't afford to buy one. So some homewrecker had to help her. Homewrecker? I know a gal who, fanc who fancied that cove lad. He liked her too. I'm pretty sure they were mates, judging by how he reacted around her. I was happy for him. Poppy was ready to set him up and s see her youngest brother shack up. And now my daughter ruined that! Her cove cut off contact with his family too. Poor Poppy's a wreck. Worrying about them. Uh, I gotta go! <laughs> I didn't need to, uh... Oh man, I really screwed up, didn't I? I'm going to the cafe. Fairy hair. I need fairy hair. An eccentric man could be seen talking to himself. Fairy hair. If I have some fairy hair, I can fix the ink shortage. A raven stag's hair would work best, but where can I find one? Huh? Wait, why? What? What? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, no, not rest. Not that, not that. I was supposed to look into quest. Why do I have a quest? Kepler's hair. I need to get Mr. Kepler's hair. Ah, god damn it. Uh, well, might as well do that. I still haven't gotten my cat pics yet. Uh, and I haven't found a culprit. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go to Mary's bar. Table for one. Uh, wait, hang on, hang on. Ooh, wait, spend a day at Mary's or go to Osh? Wait, leave first. Yeah, yeah, let's leave. Let's just leave real quick. Uh, I, I just rolled it back. Okay, in case you're wondering what happened there. Uh, let's go to the riverside just to see what's going on here beautiful spot but other than that there was nothing of interest here all right what about town square 
you saw a couple of cats lounging about. As you're about to snap a pig, they start to run with their tails behind their legs. Try as you might, you couldn't seem to lure the cats towards you. Maybe you had some fish. I need to do some fishing today. God damn it. What's in a clothes store? Lion? Oh, hey, Lyle. You working today? Just got off the clock, actually. Oh. God, I want a hang, man. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I need to get pictures of the cats first. Um, uh, So I'll see you later. Catch you later. Uh, I'll be right back. All right. I think I've got more than enough fish to actually bribe them. So, okay. Let's see. Uh, hey, kitty, kitty. You saw a couple of cats lounging about. As you were about to snap a pig, they started to run with their tails behind their legs. One cat, however, seemed to have sniffed out your clownfish and was still close enough for you to take its pick. You gave it your clownfish as a reward for being so calm and photogenic. Nice. Can I do that again? Can I do that again? You saw a couple of cats lounging about. Uh, okay, let's see. One cat, however, seemed to have sniffed out your angelfish and stole it from your pocket. After eating it one big gulp, it started to purr happily and went back to sleep on the nearby bench. Okay, two pictures so far. Let's keep doing that. Okay. One cat, however, seemed to be sni- One cat, however, seemed to have sniffed out your jellyfish and decided to give it to him so he could snap a pick. However, the cat was still pretty skittish and you ended up chasing it to the docks to get a decent pick. Okay, that's three. I need three more. You saw a couple cats lounging about. Okay. A cat seemed to take pity on you and sat on its side, exposing its belly as if to say, Don't give up! He rubbed his belly and gave him an eel for being such a good boy. All right, uh, two more. Let's see. You saw a couple of cats lounging about. As you're about to snap a pig, they start to run with their tails behind their legs. You calmly aired out the fish in your possession and hope one of the cats will come to you. It didn't take long for one of the cats to start meowing at you. You snapped the pig, then gave him, then gave him his much-deserved treat. You gave it your blue herring as a reward for being so calm and photogenic. All right, last one. Okay, a couple of cats lounging about. Probably smelling the octopus in your pocket, one cat plopped itself in front of you. Lounging in a drummy like one of your French cats pose. You snapped a pig, then gave her a much-deserved treat. Okay, let's see. Anything else? Nothing else to see here. Right, that's all six cat photos. Uh, let's just hand these over. Yep, yoink. Perfect, perfect. Uh, let's see. I will need... Well, there's nothing else I can do. Let's head over to Mary's bar and... Let's chill out with Asham. Let's go to Asham. Hey, Asham. Lion, would you like to spend the day with me? I would love to. Good. Shall we move then? I've been planning to head to the bookstore. Heard they have a sale today. Oh! Huh! Well, let's talk, I guess. Go on, damn. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, curiosity? Oh yeah, Lion had a penchant to explore the unknown. Sometimes dangerously so. The amount of times we've nearly died by their hands is not funny. Okay, let's keep talking. Uh, what about weird dreams? Parallel universes? I don't know about that, but I had an odd dream once. I was older and seemed to be operating on someone. Only the tools were nothing like we have here. I kept staying clear as I zapped the man with two square paddles. You were a doctor in another world? Let's give you a honey pop. You should make this yourself. Thank you very much. Wonderful date. Gain, gain 10 love points of awesome. Nice. Oh, I love that. Your room. Rest, rest for a night? Not yet. Not yet. I'm supposed to check on something real quick. I'm supposed to go check on Asham, I believe. Go to Asham's room. It's locked. Okay, outside. Oh, hey, Lyle. What's going on? I don't want to speak to him right now. Your room rest for tonight. Yeah, let's rest. When you walked in, Lyle was already fast asleep. You tried to make as little noise as possible before crashing to bed. Wasn't I supposed to do something? You woke up at 2.30 a.m. and made sure to move very slowly, not wanting to wake up Lyle. However, to your surprise, he was already awake, staring at you across your bed. Um, Lion? Lyle, did I wake you? N nothing. Uh, it's nothing like that. You're heading out to Asham's room later, right? How'd you know about that? Ashim wanted me to come along, told me to gear up in my uniform just in case. In case of what exactly? Honestly, I'm not too sure, but he said I'd make good protection. Protection? I'm just as confused as you are, but I didn't have the heart to say no. I see. Well, the more the merrier. Come on then. 
As you and Lyle headed into Ashim's room, you were greeted by Quill and Ashim. Thane was still nowhere inside. Where's Thane? Probably still asleep. Well, better not disturb him. Let's all head back to our dorms and... Nice try, babe. There's still half an hour or so until three. He'll show up. <sighs> Honestly, I didn't think you were the type to fear ghosts, Ashim. I told you, I'm not. Mm-hmm. By the way, Lyle, right? Heard Ashim got you pulled into all this. Can I just say I've never seen such rippling pectorals? Tell me, have you ever been with another man before? If not, I'd be happy to tutor you. Yeah, right. Huh? What? I, uh... Quill, heal. Ugh! Don't mind Quill, Lyle. He barks more than he bites. Where's Thane anyway? Should we wake him up? Sorry I'm late. Right on cue, Thane burst into the room with some bloodstains speckled on his uniform. You noticed that his eyes were still had a reddish hue around them. Has he been feeding? Where were you? Hunting rats, you know the drill. Ew! Is that rat juice on your shirt? Stay five feet away from me, you heathen! Sorry about that. He wiped the blood off his gloves, licking the excess. That's so unsanitary. Is he hungry? Before you could ask, Thane cut you off. So, wanna give it a try? It's not three yet. It's close enough. Why are you in a rush? Ah, uh, just tired us all. <laughs> Haven't slept with all the hunting I did tonight. Huh. Well, I would like to get this evening over with too, so... Lyle, you do it. Huh? Ashim stepped back behind Lyle. His frame completely engulfed behind Lyle's large build. You're half-witch. That must make you less prone to attacks. If this ghost really is a witch, I mean. Hey, don't hog Lyle all to yourself. I want to be protected by a big strong man too. Quill clung onto Lyle's forearm, wrapping around him like a body pillow. I, uh, um... Seeing Lyle fluster, you decide to... I'll hug him too! <laughs> liking the three... Liking the red staining his cheeks, you grabbed his free arm and wrapped your arms around it. Lyle was getting more and more flustered as both his arms were entangled and Ashim leaned his head on his broad back. What? I, um, uh... Oh, for course sake, I have no time for this. Angela Vistera. Nothing happened at first. However, Ashim clung harder to Lyle, just in case. Angela Vistera. <laughs> Soft sobs could now be heard. A shiver ran down your spine as you were unprepared for the sound. What the? Oh, Cor. Wait, Mr. Ashim, you're pulling too tight. Angela Vistera. Black liquid oozed down the statue's eyes. The sob got louder as as the black liquid pulled under the statue's feet. Holy sh Is that ink? Thane and Quill seemed to have taken interest in the odd liquid. They walked closer to the statue, and Quill was going so far as to swab a sample with his handkerchief. Both seemed unfazed by the event. Ashim, however, was totally dazed. His eyes froze when blinking at the sight. Ashim? Ashim! <laughs> Without warning, Ashim passed out on the floor, his head hitting the marble with a loud thud. Mr. Ashim! Oh, he's more of a wuss than I thought. I kind of feel bad now. Think he'll be okay? He'll live... Oh my god, uh, let's see, where were you, Thane? What's with the sample, Quill? You two are not so nonchalant. What's with the sample? Oh, just a test, dear. Nothing for you to be concerned about. Meaning you should be very concerned. Um, what would she do with Ashim? Should we take him to the infirmary? Just leave him on the bed. He'll be fine. Just shocked, really. He'll be fine! You two are horrible friends. Still, Lyle carried Ashim to the bed. He pat the pillow and tucked Ashim in gently. At least Lyle has a heart. I think if I stay here for too long, I might be j I might be as jaded as these two bastards. Anyway, that was fun, so I guess the rumors were true after all. Yeah, but what does it mean? Does it matter? I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the school. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm tired. 
I gotta go. Thane left the room in a hurry, slamming the door as he did so. Is it just me or was his yawn fake as... Ugh. It's just you. Paranoia, probably. Quill pulled out a small empty vial from his pocket and collected more of the statue's dark liquid. What are you doing? Research. I... I kept thinking back on what Hannah said. About my family not being as truthful as they seem. Is that why you wanted Witchblood? Yes. Actually, Quill, I was wondering about that. Will my blood do since I'm a halfling? Oh? Are you offering? I yeah. Huh. I'll compensate you nicely for your cooperation, but frankly, what I need most is pure blood witch blood. Hence why I have high hopes for you, Lion. Where would you find a pure blood? That's what I've been thinking. That's what I've been asking. Oh, I'm sure you'll find a way. Meanwhile, Lyle... Would you come with me to the bathroom? I need to prick you a bit, and I don't want the blood to splatter everywhere. Just us two? Don't worry, I'll keep my hands to myself, unless you change your mind about me educating you. Has anyone told you that you're a bit of a creep? <laughs> I love Lyle! Oh my god! As he said that, Lyle covered his chest merely. <laughs> You could help a guffaw at Quill's face. Uh, Quill's face was becoming red as he wasn't prepared for such a comment. My apologies. I won't touch you that way or make any more comments. Now, can I please get a sample of your blood? I'll pay a hundred gold for it. A hundred fifty. hundred twenty-five. Deal. I'll leave you guys to it then. The sight of blood makes me squeamish. Don't worry, Lyle. If you're not back in our room in 20 minutes, I'll go ahead and throw a search party. Rude! Thank you! As soon as you exited Ashim's room, Fat Fingers dug into your shoulders and a rough shove pinned you to the wall. Ah, what the heck? Where's Thane? But who are you? Doesn't matter. Where's Thane? What's it to you? Don't you wonder how Tatum and all her friends got their bloods drained? They got cut. On the wrist and neck. Convenient, right? It's a vampire attack, I tell you. You're a vampire to be precise. Do you have any proof of that or are you just shooting blanks? Oh, uh, don't play dumb. I saw how he licked the blood off his fingers at the cafeteria. And his eyes. They're even redder than usual. He's lost it, I tell you. None of us are safe anymore. <sighs> what are you going to do anyway? I'll cover for Thane. Like, yeah, like homies before whoever this guy is. If he was behind Tatum, he wouldn't be hunting out rats just now. Besides, there are other suspects, you know. If it were Thane, there would have been bite marks. But that would have been obvious, wouldn't it? He could have just scratched her neck and sucked out the excess blood. Damn, that is true. Thane's not smart enough for that. If you believe he's incapable simply because of his low grades, then you're much more of a fool than he is. Winston released you from his grasp, and with another crude shove, he turned on his heels and headed back towards the dorm entrance. One of these days, that beast inside him will slip up, and I'll be ready for him. You'll see! He left the dorm in a hurry, slamming the door shut. Crazy bastard! You submitted your statement to Mr. Kepler and hoped that he'd punish him accordingly, preferably with an expulsion. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait, wait a minute. That was a culprit? Huh. Huh. He went back to your room, Lyle coming in a few minutes later. He seemed to have noticed his scuffle and asked what happened to your jacket, but you brushed him off, not wanting him to worry. All you wanted for the night was a good night's sleep. Hopefully it was a luxury you could afford this time. For once, you and Lyle were able to get some decent sleep. You two walked to the cafeteria together. You also managed to convince him to join you and the guys for breakfast together. You got plentiful stares as Lyle sat next to you and Ashim, but Quill quickly took the attention away by making some obscene mouth gestures. Ashim shook his head, seemingly annoyed with it all. Should I move? Nonsense. Let the others talk. They're just jealous, Lyle. It's not often for us to welcome others into a little quartet. Still, I'm younger than all of you. I should be sitting with my peers. And let them bully you? Stay. I insist. Poor knows I owe you after my embarrassing behavior last night. 
you could have just admitted you were scared shitless, Asham, would be less dramatic. Ah, oh, but wasn't the drama the highlight of it all? You guys are funny, but still, I think I should go and join my peers, thanks. Lyle got up from the table and left. Wait, Lyle! Before you could defuse the situation, the principal tapped his wine glass, calling for the student's attention. The students immediately quieted down, following his command. Students, I'm afraid I have a grievous announcement to make. One of your peers, Winston Heath, was found unconscious this morning, with his throat and wrist slit. The same injuries were found on Miss Tatum, Mr. Locke, and Mr. Hampshire two nights ago. The students start talking amongst themselves at that, clearly perturbed by the idea of some sort of serial killer. So I suppose you couldn't call it a serial killer when no one has been found dead yet. To ensure your safety, the school will now place a mandatory curfew. All of you are expected to be back in your dorm rooms by 8 p.m. Doesn't make much of a difference for me. I can still fish all day long. Teachers will do a regular checkup every six hours or so, entering the rooms if need be. We realize how invasive this procedure is. However, until the culprit has been caught, it's best to take necessary precaution. If any of you have complaints, please refrain for now and head to my office if you absolutely have to voice it. That is all. A roar of heated arguments could be heard from the students, mostly lamenting the lack of privacy. You definitely could empathize with their frustration, but more importantly, you were more worried about Thane. Thane who Winston hated with all his being. Thane who Winston was tracking down last night. Did he really go back to his own room, or did he meet Winston and... You know, if you have something to say, you can just say it. T was I staring? Right into my soul. The principal already interviewed me, if that's what you were wondering. Did he know? Do you tell him where you were? Yeah, I told him about your little fainting incident, too. How did he react? To you. Not to Asham, I mean. He didn't believe me at first, but Miss Volkova covered for me. Said we went mice hunting together. Did you? Not with her. Yet she covered for you. Does it matter? We're both the most obvious suspects. We're the only vamps here. Us leeches have to look out for each other. Just tell us if you need anything. Our headmaster can be rather harsh when he wants to be. I know. Wait, that's it? You two are just going to believe him? I know it may seem jarring to you, dear, but well, it's Thane. This man wouldn't even hurt a rabbit. Not to mention the clear like brain cells. Hey! If it were Thane, he would have sunk his teeth right in, leaving clear evidence of his debauchery. Volkova, or perhaps Poppy, would have been better subjects. Poppy? Werewolves are quite fearsome when angered. Huh. Well. Okay. What? What do you mean, do you trust him that much? Um, I'm gonna check on this, and if it's not what I think it is, like, I'm gonna roll it back. You trust him that much? Of course! Yeah. Because he's frankly far too incompetent for murder. <laughs> oh god, I'm definitely rolling it back. Okay. I guess you're right. Such confidence. I'm right here, you know. You forced a smile, but you couldn't seem to stifle this heavy pressure in your heart. Despite his wide grin, you could sense something was truly different with Thane. An ominous difference that you've caused. You and your blood. Well, now I get to explore. Uh, let's go to the dorm real quick. Uh, wait, what's going on up here? Heard Ajax got beat up at the dance festival. Heard if... I wonder if Asham is responsible. Who are you? Uh, her, Asham got his ass wiped by Ajax. By the time someone put that fairy into place. Ow! Did you just slap me? Oh, sorry. That was a fly. <laughs> Thanks again for the hot cocoa. Let's see. The amount of screwing I heard on the festival night. Do people not know how thin the walls here are? Well, um, good for them, I guess. Uh, let's see. Anything new here? Everyone seems to be hung up on Asham's fight with Ajax. Seriously, get over it. Okay, nothing new. Uh, handsome Asham, Ajax's father, quite a nasty fight. Um, something else here. Okay, we've already read all this. I'm gonna skip ahead till something's different again. All right, so it seems that most of the people are like talking about the festival, about like some of the strange things that's been happening around uh, the campus lately. Um, I did need to get the hair from Mr. Kepler, so yeah. Uh, can I have your hair, please? 
Oh? And pray tell, why would you want such a personal memento from yours truly? If this is another one of your experiments, Lion, I'm not having it. Experiments? No, it's for research. There's a request from someone downtown. Oh, let me guess. Some mumbling drawl in a dingy cafe wishes for a raven stag hair. I assume you've met? Multiple times now. Five to be exact. None of them were to of my volition. Somehow, he's got it in his head that my hair would help with the ink shortage. Nothing but utter nonsense. Is it nonsense, though? I mean, your kind was created by the Witch of Change, right? Maybe some of his magic essence runs through your vein and can be used as a conduit like the ink. Huh. You've been reading. It's true. It's true that the Ravenstacks were born from the Witch of Change's meddlings. So it is not unimaginable to think that some of their magic run through our DNA. But rune ink is not of blood or bone, yet it is the very life of magic itself. True, but still, aren't you curious? Don't you want to be one of the first to discover the alternative for rune ink? Kepler took a long look at you before plucking out a strand of his hair and handed it over to you. Don't waste it. Thanks! Also, can I ask you a question about your horns? What about them? The book said your horns would thrive with death. You have five segments on each horn. Does that mean you've killed five people? Yes. Wow, you're admitting it just like that! I've lived for centuries and been in six wars, you meddling brat. Just five deaths is a blessing with all the bloodshed I've experienced. Oh, and you put it like that. Damn! I didn't, I didn't expect Mr. Kepler to be such a uh, pacifist, Jesus Christ. The fact that he's lived for centuries through multiple wars and only had five deaths on his hand, that is impressive. If you want to judge someone with your newly acquired moral compass, perhaps you, you should direct your attention to Mary. There's a reason that a girl hides her thorn-riddled horns. The length of her horns can fill the entire room when revealed. But you can never tell with her current appearance now, can you? Wait, what? Seriously? Who's Mary? That's what they say. Of course, it's just a rumor. But you know how much I love rumors. Uh, okay, okay. I could just hand that in now, but I want to wait until the weekend for that. Uh, wait, well, 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 well. Oh, yeah. There's another thing I want to do, which was uh, go over to potions class, because Asham is here. Huh. Asham? What are you doing here all alone? Oh, a -line. Just starting up on things. I'm afraid to admit, I've been behind on my studies due to my little tantrum. You mean your emo fest? I prefer the term contemplating in peace. Uh-huh. Do you need a breather? Your frown, your frown lines are even deeper than usual. <sighs> well, I suppose a break is necessary. What do you exactly have in mind? Well, I was hoping you'd have some ideas. I'm just a tourist after all. I see. There is one spot we can go. Yo! Now that's what I call a view! Stunning, isn't it? Asham took you to Lenar, right up to the top of the hills near an abandoned church. The nuns let us roam freely in this village. No permission slip required. I believe they used to visit this church. I used to wonder who would even consider building a church in such a secluded area. Perhaps a noble with too much coin around. It's a beautiful structure. Shame that its former glory is now swallowed by time. Why is it abandoned? The villagers here don't believe in witches, even the ones elevated to godhood like Kor. However, it's still a nice place to clear one's head. The silence is quite comforting. Though sometimes I do hear singing coming from the woods. Singing? Yes, a man's voice. Nothing of much talent, but somehow I can't help but seek it out. It may be a lost siren. Sirens? How do you know that? I'm used to their pull. I befriended younger sirens back when my mother and I lived on the streets. They would bring us bread and fruits sometimes. Wait, what? I thought your mother married into a rich family. She did, but not until I was six. Before then, we were either making the best of it in brothels or roughing it out on the streets. My mother's clients weren't exactly fond of me, and I would often get us kicked out. Kicked out? I couldn't stand the way my mother was treated. Sometimes I would bite her clients and scare them away. Luckily, my mother eventually met my stepfather, 
lovely man, though a bit dull. He treated my mother like a queen, and I like his actual son. It's a bit embarrassing, actually. Sometimes he calls me young prince, and he practically worships the ground my mother walks on. Ah, well, sounds nice. It is, but I don't want to depend on him. What if my mother loses his favor or passes early? I'm not sure if his love would extend to me then. I guess that's why he works so hard on his image and earning favors. I doubt your father would abandon the son he calls Young Prince. Even my parents don't call me that. I guess you're right. Regardless, even if my stepfather stays by my side, I don't want to burden him. Yes, Lion was the main reason why I tried so hard to get ahead in life, but there are other factors too. Sounds complicated. Have you ever thought about, I don't know, turning off your brain? Huh? Like, just enjoy the moment, not care about your future or imagine what ifs. What do you want to be if you didn't care about money, prestige, and all that jazz? Don't laugh, but I wanted to be a florist. A florist? Yes, I know it's a bit stereotypical, isn't it? A fairy being surrounded by flowers and pretty things. If you could turn into a lit- If you could turn into a tiny fairy, that would have been perfect. You could collect their honey like a little bee. Only pure blood fairies can change their size. Also, don't tease me. I'm being honest here. I do love flowers. That's why Lyle and I get along so well. I mean, fellow halflings aside. He's also a good gardener, and he knows a lot about plants. Another career to consider would probably be a potion master. So look at Erwin. I'm starting to have doubts of that prospect. Oh, you know Erwin too? Yeah, I know he's looking for a plant here to cure his mutism. I try to talk to him sometimes when he roams around these parts. Talk as in, he writes on his pad and I read its contents. Apparently he had a potion store in Castri. The stress got to him and he fled. That's why he does puppetry here on the side. Interesting man. Very pretty eyes. I would have mistaken him for a siren. The mute sirens are impossible. What if he's a halfling? No, his eyes are too vibrant for that. He's something else. Maybe a witch, but... I don't want to jump to conclusions. Anyway, enough talk about some man I barely know. That's hardly appropriate for a date. This is a date? Is it not? Um, well, yeah, but... I guess I expected you to take me to dinner or something. Oh, trust me. I... I came prepared. Ashen pulled out a large picnic basket from one of his runes. Summoning rune. Good for hiding surprises like this. Care for a picnic? He looked into the basket and saw all your favorite dishes, surprised that he knew what you liked. You and your doppelganger did share similar taste buds. Wait, is that wine? Non-alcoholic cider. That is perfect! I aim to please. You spent the rest of the day eating and drinking with Asham. When nightfall came, the two of you leaned back and watched the stars. With your heart and stomach full, he walked you to your room. Your room. Rest for tonight. Not yet. I want to check around, just make sure everything's a okay. You know, just make sure that, uh, well, actually, I don't even know if we'll even see anyone around, considering, like, there's a curfew going on now. Oh, okay. Let's just chill out with Lyle, I guess. Yep, let's go. Let's go. And I'm going to touch him everywhere. Uh, okay, I've already touched here. Okay, I've already touched his hands. His head? Can I pat his head? Oh, oh, the Falcon. Okay, let's chat about something, I guess. So we've already gone through all of these. Uh, we've already gone through all these. Um, uh, his elbow? The sleeve's a bit tight, but at least it's a better situation compared to my buttons. The buttons around my chest area kept popping off, so I never buttoned them th again. Hmm. Do I have a gift? No, I don't. Uh, anywhere else I can touch? Uh, okay, I can touch his shirt. I can touch his shoulder. Oh, God damn it. It's the same dealio. Wait, wait. Can I touch? I can't touch anything else. No! 10 love points of Lyle. <laughs> oh, man. I should have gone lower. You spent some time tossing and turning in your bed before finally getting some sleep. You woke up to Quill's messages bombarding your phone. What? Quill? So it did some tests on the statue blade, and you'll be surprised with what I found. Come meet me near the fountain if you're interested. Okay. I'm gonna do a bit of exploring before that, though. Well, nothing new today. Here we are at the fountain. So, how are you, darling? 
All is well, I hope. God, the small talk. What's going on now, Quill? So direct. But well, if you insist. Remember that ink sample I took from the statue when Lyle's bled? Yes. The ink rune is... The ink is rune inkle, right? And also, it didn't match 100% with Lyle's blood. It has some similarities. Matching up with what you and Thane said about Kor's blood being rune ink all along. I did find something even more concerning. Go on. Those shots I took as a wee child. The ones I told you about on our first date. I think they were witch blood. Out of a whim, I sampled one of the remaining vaccines and found that they were an identical match to Lyle's blood. What? That's how I first reacted, albeit more eloquently, of course. Why would your family juice you up with witch blood? That's something I'm trying to figure out. I asked Penna and he admitted he discovered this ages ago. But still, he told me that this is not something I should get involved in and in instead let the adults work things out. And let me guess, you're not going to do that, are you? Of course not! I can't just stand here and look pretty. I have to look into this while looking pretty. Of course. And what exactly do you want me to do about this? Well, you see, my parents and I don't exactly get along. Daddy issues is a common trait in our friend circle, and I'm no exception. I haven't seen my dad in person since spring. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Two years ago. Oh. So I've been thinking about what to do for my dear father to finally notice me. And then I just had the brightest idea. Marriage. Say what now? Engagement. Betrothal. The one thing I've been avoiding all my life since I was 14. A fake engagement will surely get my father's attention. Meet the folks, as you commoners might say. And... We haven't soul bonded, so that would anger my father even more. He would ask why we haven't made our bond permanent. Ah, uh, well. Get on one knee, then. Quill Inkwell, will you do me the honor of being my husband? Wait, is that it? That's how your people in your world propose? How plebeian. No, no, that simply won't do. Stand up. Let me do this. Quill got on one knee and gently held your right hand. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just did not expect Quill to actually do this. God, I I love the CG, holy frick. From the tips of your hair, down to the soles of your feet, I shall love every inch of you, soul and body. Even after our bones turn to dust, until time ceases to exist. And our souls are fully consumed in Elysium or the Abyss. I shall never stop being yours. And you, mine, to cherish and to behold, to love and care. My heart and soul are yours to claim, so long as you have me. Whoa, so even after death? Marriage here is a lot more committed, huh? This is where you say, I shall have you. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Huh. Are you always this articulate? But I suppose that will do. After a firm kiss on your ring finger, Quill start to rise back up. And all around you people start whispering, clearly taken aback by Quill's grand gesture. Did they just... Holy, are they engaged? I knew they were into each other. Lovely. Word should spread to my father one way or another. When one proposes, a soul bond ritual usually follows. Of course... Us harlots are not doing that. I'm sure he'll be absolutely livid. Might take a week or two until he actually confronts us, though. Business first and all? Oh, well. I'm sure an invite to his manor will come sooner or later. Wait, you guys don't live together? Only in winter. Even then, it's a miracle if we even pass by each other. We each have our own humble abode, don't you? No, well, I mean, I do now, but I rent. My parents didn't give me a home just to loiter around in. This damn spoiled brat. You know, I wish you'd stop using me so much. Or at least compensate me for all the trouble you've caused. Huh. Well, when you put it like that, I guess you have a point. How about I take you somewhere? Somewhere nice this time, not just to enjoy the view. Hmm. How nice are we talking? It's rustic. But the food is divine, even more so than any seven-star restaurant I've been to. 
and it's not in town, so the nuns will let us go there as long as we're back before curfew. All expense on me, of course. It's only fair. Okay, deal. Lead the way. Quill offered you his arm. You took it and walked with him to wherever he was taking you. Of all places, a rustic restaurant by the shore wasn't what you expected. Are we back in Lanar again? What is with everyone in Lanar? I have a feeling something plot related is going to happen here. Like something major, like something major plot related. Is there going to be a fight happening here? Are one of the witches just hiding out in like this little fishing village or what's going on? Still, it was not like you don't enjoy a visit to Lanar. Oh. I didn't think you'd take me here. You've been here before? With Lyle, yeah. I've never visited this restaurant. You'll love it. This village has the best ham in all of Ignea. Here, let me order you a sample tray. He nodded as you took a sip of the wine Quill ordered. Just a sip before going back to your juice. Sometimes you really wish you hadn't gone sober. Yes, you try to enjoy your drink. Cheerful music started playing in the background and you couldn't help but turn your head towards the sound. Oh hey, it's him again! You saw a bunch of kids swarming a striking man with large glasses on his face. The man held up toy puppets as dozens of kids sat obediently around him. It's that puppet show again, huh? The kids must really like him. What would you like to order, Lion? This is your day after all. I don't mind spoiling you rotten, just for today. Hmm, can I order the entire menu? If you can finish it, sure. Actually, I was thinking of sharing it with the kids. You glance your way to the kids, watching the puppet show again, some of whom were clad in tattered clothes. And one looked particularly emaciated, almost all skin and bones, the blind child with bandages over his eyes. You want to share your meal with the children around here? Yeah, nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, you're rich. <laughs> that I am. All right, if that's the case, why should we stop there? Let's order a restaurant's worth of food and give everyone a hearty meal. Quill got excited now as he called the waiter and shared his request. The waiter went wide-eyed, but a soft smile was soon plastered on his face as he understood Quill's intentions. Soon, meal after meal came out of the kitchen as the, kid, as the two of you helped serve them to the kids, all happily crowding your tables, eating their fill. Oh, thank you, mister. This is delicious. Wait, wait. I want a bite too! The blind child screamed, trying to find which way was which as the other kids greedily snatched away food from him. Fitting him, you walked over to the child, only to be cut off by a young girl who seemed rather close to him. Here, Steve, I got you a plate. Hey! To your surprise, the puppeteer snatched the plate away from the child. Then he greedily scoffed the food down. You? Why? The blind child started crying. Both you and Quill were clearly disturbed by the sight. What kind of adult would bully a helpless kid? With wide strides, Quill rushed to the man. Owen seemed to notice Quill's hostility and fled. Shh. What was his deal? I don't know. If he was hungry, he could have just asked. Are you okay, child? Here, there's plenty of food for everyone. Quill passed the plate towards the blind boy, apparently named Steve. Thank you. You're welcome. Twisting his head back towards you, Quill asks for your hand as he guides you back to your table. Now, with that done, care to join me for our own dinner? All this philanthropy has made me hungry. After a hearty meal, Quill finally took you back to your dorm room, walk you back to your own door. I had fun today. Being nice and fond over like God was quite pleasant. I know about the god part, but it beats rounding up witches, that's for sure. Well, I don't know about that. Still, you're a very kind person, Lion. So kind that I might actually be falling for you. <laughs> Fall away. I- KISS HIM! KISS! SMOOCH! Mm -hmm. Feeling bold, you give Quill a peck on his lips. The effect was immediate. Him blushing bright red like a ripe tomato. I wanted to kiss you first! <laughs> well, no one's stopping you from kissing me again. No, the timing isn't right, and I planned it all in my head to lean over and gently kiss your cheek. Then you blush, and I run into my quarters, and... Quill? Huh? Shut up. 
<sighs> Another kiss, deeper this time. You licked his bottom lip, which caused the man to noticeably shiver as he tightened his grip around your waist. He whimpered, then let out a deep sigh as you broke the kiss. I had fun today, Quill. M me too. So, I didn't expect such a heated ending. You're going to ruin me, aren't you? Ha! <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe if you ever want to stop being a virgin. Huh. <sighs> well, I'm not opposed to the notion. Quill's blush deepened, but you could feel him getting a bit rigid in your arms. Something was on his mind. But not tonight. No, not tonight. So, I hope you don't have to wait until we're at your parents' house either. Oh, can you imagine? Me and you going at it like rabbits with my father right next door. I mean... Could be considered. Could be. How scandalous. <laughs> I hope you and your dad work it out, Quill. I hope whatever this witchblade issue is, it's not as big of a deal as you think. Quill nodded, though with a noticeable lack of enthusiasm. One could only hope. Good night, lion. Good night. Quill returned to his dorm room. You should also turn in for tonight. Your room. Rest for tonight? Not yet. I want to just look around a bit. Uh, let's see. Nothing here. Okay, let's see. Downstairs. It's locked. Out here. Hey, Lyle, what's going on? Let's hang with Lyle and touch him everywhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, ooh, ooh, can I? Can I? Should I? I'm gonna do it. Ah, uh, again with the sleeves. I don't want to hear about your goddamn sleeves. No, not doing that. Uh, let's see. Just stay anywhere. Can I? I want to know what happens. But <laughs> he loves it. My legs? Mr. Ashim said they were quite impressive. We even had a racing competition together. I'm not sure if he let me win or not, but I'm happy he didn't underestimate me. Well, well, anywhere I've not touched his, his nose, his snores. I see I've gotten a bit chubby since coming here. Not that I mind. It's hard not to gain weight with all the delicious food the school provides. Good date. Five love points with Lyle. Nice. Absolutely amazing. Curfew time, children. Everyone to their rooms. Deatrich and several other teachers could be seen roaming around, ushering the students to their rooms, much to everyone's protest. How long do you think this curfew will last? Not long, hopefully. Did you see the light in front of the principal's office? Total chaos. Besides, I think I already know the culprit. A certain redhead with a newfound blood obsession, perhaps. Lion? Uh, yeah? I asked if you wanted to take a bath first since I wanted to use the shower, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. As Lyle walked to the bathroom, you couldn't help but pace around the room to try and stifle your unease. When you diverted your attention to the view outside, you saw something jumping out of the window from the room above you. Squinting, you noticed that it was Thane. It was in its winged form, sneaking out from the fourth floor. Emboldened, you opened the window. You were on the f third floor, but there was a tree branch you could probably jump to. Perhaps if you could have a running start? Um, normally, but carefully. What were you thinking? Running out of the window like some sort of stuntman? You just had to walk down the ledge and cross over to the branch. Your legs should be long enough. Lyle, I'm out. Cover for me, okay? You screamed as you can hear Lyle opening up the bathroom door. What? As you approached the window, you already went on your way, crossing over to the tree. Lyle talked to you from the window, wearing nothing but a towel to cover his modesty. Lion, what are you doing? What if the teachers catch you? Then I'll pretend that I'm drunk. Look, this is important to me, okay? Lyle, just cover for me, okay? Uh, okay. Thanks. Be careful. You climbed down the tree and ran towards the direction you last saw Thane. Don't do anything stupid, Thane. As you roam around the campus, you could see some teachers lurking about, their black church attires nearly giving you a heart attack. But you calmed down once you saw a red-haired silhouette heading towards the docks. After making sure Thane climbed far enough down the stairs, you slowly walked after him, making sure your steps were light enough not to be heard. As you got closer and closer, you used the fire rune to conjure a small flame, illuminating the area. Thane? You saw Thane, covered in blood, dozens of fishes and turtles surrounding him, 
all gutted and drained. Fangs protruding out of his cheeks. He snarled at you. L lion? And this is where I'm ending today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. We will be back soon enough with more Bewitching Sinners. So hey, uh, stick around for that. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.